there you are. Hey. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Happy Friday. Today is our Digital Professional Development Fridays. And we have special guests with us. And I'm so excited to have Everfay, um, Everfy and Facebook with us to teach us more skills and to add to our toolkit how we support families in a digital professional development, digital platform. And of course, our amazing empowerment team that will be introducing themselves in a few minutes. We also have um, Diana Miller, um, who will assist me today in our chat to answer any questions that you may have um, regarding FACE. Um, she will be here. We'll be, we will be engaging with you throughout the chat and just kind of enjoying the presentation as you are watching. Uh, so enjoy your time. And I want to introduce that we are having next month Family Engagement Empowerment Month. Yes. So before I introduce this concept, um, in the chat, um, October, I want you to answer this. I want you to finish this uh, sentence for me. October, we celebrate dot, dot, dot. So let me see on your, on your chat, what do you normally celebrate in October? What are some of the awareness initiatives that you are aware of? Let's see. Let me take a look at the chat. Oh, breast cancer, that's correct. Breast cancer, what else do you celebrate? Hispanic Heritage Month, okay, awesome. Bullying, yes. Okay, so we got it. Oh, we also have Digital Citizenship Week, woohoo! Uh, so all of these things we celebrate, and next month is all about celebrating families, partnerships, and community engagement. So raise your hands, if you are a representative of a family facing community. Oh, I see those hands going up. That's right, it's all about us next month. So what I want you guys to think about is what are some ideas or what some of activities that you can promote for Family Engagement Month? So the idea is for you and we actually, next week, next Friday, I'm gonna introduce the Family Engagement Toolkit for next, for next month. Uh, so we will have some fun activities. We have amazing partners um, from Common Sense Education to Why Open Schools. The Nets, the Brooklyn Nets is going to partner up with the DOE. So we will have live clinics from the Nets. We will also have read alouds from some of our amazing partners. Um, and we're also, what's really cool is we're going to kick off the Parent University next month. It's all about parent empowerment and we need your help in order to engage all of our families to bring awareness of who we are in our schools and how we promote parent empowerment. So think about some ways that you can bring awareness to activities that happen in your school. So I'm really happy to introduce our my co-host, um, Laura, who then will let us know uh, what's happening throughout our time today. But again, um, you will have the opportunity next week to learn all about our family um, engagement month and all the activities that we have lined up for you. Um, and with that said, I just want to turn it over to our wonderful host, Laura. Hi, Thank everybody. you so much. So we're actually um, going to run through some introductions and then we've got Tali who's going to um, share some important information as well. So we are DIIT, the Division of Instructional and Information Technology. My name is Laura Ogando. I'm one of the program managers for the Office of Digital Literacy and Inclusion. I'm going to pass it over to Lisa. Um, hold on one second. <laughs> Hello, PCs and the rest. <laughs> um, we're really happy to have you here today. I uh, thank all of you who've been with us for the past few weeks and welcome to the newcomers. Uh, some of you know, I've been with the DOE since the 90s and I love parent coordinators. I was so excited when that role was created and I'm really excited to be learning with you all. And with that, I'll turn it over to Christina. Hi everybody. I don't I don't have a cool little fancy mic like Lisa does, but <laughs> good morning. Happy Friday. Excited to be here. Um, also a DIIT part of the EdTech program. 
assisting this lovely group um, and passing it back to Laura. Awesome. And we have Latiqua, who actually is here today, again, in the background. All of us are in the chat. We know that right now we have over 130 something participants, but please feel free to use the chat. We are moderating and we know that there is going to be a lot of information shared as, as is common now with these Friday PDs. So please, if there's something that you want support in, if you have a question, please drop it in the chat. We will absolutely make sure that it gets addressed. Um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Tally, our partner from Common Sense. Okay, great. Thanks so much, everyone. And I, I know I'm kind of in the background here with the light, but I don't have a cool microphone, but I tried to do an underwater theme to match the weather outside. And um, I think I've said this before, but I am a former DOE teacher, and I just have to give a shout out to Mrs. Shimana, who as a new struggling teacher really saved me. She was an amazing parent coordinator. I will probably do this every week with the hopes that at some point I can reconnect with her. Um, and I'm also a DOE parent. And so really thank you so much. And if we go to the next slide, I'm really excited because next week is Digital Citizenship Week. I know Lisa popped some links. Um, in the chat, I did as well. Um, digital Citizenship Week is all about raising awareness about what it means to be a good digital, good digital citizen. We are living our lives both in school, whether we're hybrid or remote online with learning, and we're also spending so much more time online now too with the pandemic. So how do we make sure we're interacting with the digital world respectfully, constructively, ethically, that we're creating things that are helpful rather than harmful. And that's what digital citizenship is all about. So I have a bunch of slides that I'm just gonna highlight quickly, but they're more for you for reference so that you can share them with your educators. I just want you to see, we don't have to open these links, but in your presentation, these are all hyperlinks so you can share them with your teachers. And you'll see in the corner on the far right, it says engage families. I'm gonna show you that link in a moment. But really our hope is that every day you're posting a question on your school's website and your teachers are asking your students every day a question related to these different topics. So, you know, on Monday, how can I create media balance in my life? And then Tuesday, you can see down that list, how can I keep my private information safe and so forth. And then ending on Friday with really how do we think critically about everything that we're seeing and creating and sharing. So if you don't mind flipping, Laura, we have this for middle school and then for high school. And then I wanted to highlight um, for you too, if you're not already registered at commonsense.org slash education, it's totally free. But to download all of our resources, we just asked you to register. Um, so go ahead and do that. You've got that link there. You can do that you know, during the presentation or later. And then the next slide, please. Um, I also wanted to highlight, we've shared this before and we're doing part of next week's session, we'll be talking about how you can talk to your parents about wideopenschool.org. But this is basically a huge collection of high quality resources that are designed to be supplemental learning opportunities for families and for educators. And we're really gonna focus on how you can help your parents um, use Wide Open School to help their kids. So if you don't mind clicking on that link, Laura, the daily plan there, just so you can see, this is, we've designed this so that every day you can find other activities. So maybe, you know, it's a hybrid learning day and your kids are going through their work really quickly and you're like, gosh, I really want some extra reading support or I want some movement activities. But you can see for next week, we've already started every day, there's gonna be a different digital citizenship lesson. And it's not up yet. Every day there'll be an activity for families related to digital citizenship as well. And then if we go back to the slide deck, I'm gonna open up one, ask you to open up one more link um, on the next slide. Is, um, yes, this one. So the Common Sense Family Resources. And this is a great resource. There's family tips for all grade levels. And if you click on that, Laura, even the grades K through five for the family tips, I just want everyone to see all of our resources in general are in English and Spanish. Our family tips are in 12 different languages. So that's a really easy thing to either send home or post on the school's website. You're always allowed to share our resources. Um, we have a Creative Commons license. And on that same link, 
if you um, go back to that site, when you scroll down, there's different family activities. And these are also really great for Digital Citizenship Week to send home or to post and say, hey, you can do an activity with your kids around media balance and well being, or about thinking about digital footprints or thinking about positive online communication. What do you, how do you act as an upstander, you know, versus um, just a bystander if you see any cyberbullying happening or negative behavior? So I'm going to stop there. We'll talk more about that next week, but please go ahead and check this out in the slide deck, all of those links and share them with your families. And thank you everyone again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tali. Uh, you know, that's one of the things that we love um, here at the DOE. We partner with some really great organizations. So obviously today we are partnering with EverFi, but we also partner with Tali and Common Sense. And basically we're here to just support you. We want to make sure that teachers and our parent coordinators and everyone at the school level has all the resources they need to actually do this work, right? Because uh, it can feel overwhelming, but we've got all the tools uh, at your fingertips. So with that, we want to know who's in the room. So I'm going to launch our poll. Um, so one second here. And uh, I know that we probably have a lot of parent coordinators, but I know we also have some FLCs and some FSCs. Uh, we may even have some teachers. Um, but take a moment, let us know who's in the room. And just as predicted, I'm already seeing, we've got a ton of parent coordinators. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm already seeing there's, oh, over 80 of you in here. Wow. And if you happen to be one of the handful of folks that have said other, let us know what you do. Um, All right, I'll give you about 10 more seconds and then we have one more poll before we get underway and pass it over to our colleagues at EverFi. Um, Laura, we have several people asking for a link to this presentation. So if you or Latiqua can drop it into the chat, that would be fabulous. Sure, sure. All right, let's end this one and then let's do a little fun. How are you feeling? So let me get that poll up. All right. So hopefully you are feeling excited for Friday, excited for another weekend, um, but it's perfectly okay if you're kind of, I feel like we always get a lot of tireds. Derry, your, your, your picture on this poll is very popular. <laughs> Um, and it's perfectly fine if, if you're in that tired category. It's always another long week, right? <laughs> oh, and it's, it's looking like we're, we're pretty evenly split between tired and happy. So I'll give you guys a few more moments. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. We just like to, um, we like to, you know, kind of do these things. Um, you know, it's it's actually, it's it's not just something that you can do with students to kind of read the room, but also it's important to check in with each other as adults. How are people feeling? Um, kind of what's going on in the world? I know that right now things are a little crazy, but it's always good to do um, some time for just like checking in and and making sure we're all okay. So uh, with that, we are going to pass it over to our colleagues at EverFi. I know we have Chloe and uh, Meg and Pooja on the line, along with a couple of uh, other colleagues from their team. So, so happy to have you ladies and uh, excited to learn. Awesome. Thanks so much, Laura. We are very excited to be here today. I will go ahead and share my screen here now. Okay, are we good to go? Good to go. 
Awesome. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. It is so great to be here today. My name is Meg and I am part of our New York City implementation team with Everfi. And we are here today to talk with you about our partnership with Facebook that we have on their Get Digital program and all kinds of wonderful resources um, around digital wellness and digital citizenship and how to promote this across your school communities. So um, our agenda for today is first we'll do some introductions. We are very excited to have a representative with us here from Facebook as well today. Um, and so in addition to that, we will also talk through, you know, the Get Digital resources themselves and how to access them. We'll do a curriculum deep dive into the Get Digital curriculum and also some additional resources through the Everfi platform. And then we'll talk through just some general action items. And like Laura said, please feel free to chat in questions throughout. Um, we, we are excited to engage with you all today. So my name, like I said, my name is Meg. I am a senior schools manager on our New York City team. And we, um, Chloe, Pooja, and I, we work together to support different boroughs across New York City. So we collaborate really closely, but then we also have a direct contact person for the borough your school is in. So I directly support um, the Bronx, um, Manhattan and Brooklyn. Chloe, um, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Sure. Hey, everyone. It's great to be here today. You'll hear from me a little bit later in this presentation, and it's great to see some familiar faces in a chat. Shout out to Eileen Lennon, our EverFi ambassador. Um, but I support Queens specifically. Uh, I used to be in the classroom for four years, and I've worked at EverFi for about two years, and I'll pass it over to Pooja. Thanks, Chloe. Happy Friday, everyone. Um, so like Meg mentioned, we all work specifically with certain boroughs. So I work with Staten Island and I've been with Everfi for just under two years and I'm happy to be here with you all today. Awesome. Thanks so much. And like I said, we do have um, Holly Hawkins joining us today from Facebook as well. And she'd like to share um, just a bit about herself and the, the partnership that we have with Facebook and the Get Digital program. So Holly, are, are you here? Okay, looks like maybe Holly has not been able to join. Let me go. Uh, Holly is here. We have to unmute her mic. Oh, okay. Um, so one of the hosts can do that. I think okay. I can do that. Okay, Holly is unmuted and ready to go. Great, thanks, Lisa. Yep. All right, fantastic. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Holly Hawkins, and I'm from the Global Safety Policy and Programs team at Facebook. For having and a I session with Facebook. <laughs> and I am delighted to be with, uh, with you here today. At Facebook, we are committed to helping build safe, healthy, and supportive digital communities. And one of our key concerns is the safety and well-being of young people. We work with safety experts, we work with academia and NGOs across the U.S. and around the globe to build strong programs that help keep them safe online, that support healthy engagement and resilience, and they provide young people with skills to use the internet for good, to give young people a voice, which is critical uh, during these unprecedented times that we're in. And we know that back to school looks very different this year due to COVID-19, with a large number of students learning either in a hybrid model or fully remote learning model. And parents, teachers, administrators around the world are facing a myriad of challenges including maintaining the safety and well-being of the children and students. We must uh, recently launched Get Digital, our digital citizen citizenship and well-being program uh, that we're going to review today. It's designed to bring educators and parents the resources needed to help young people thrive in today's complex digital world. Understanding these resources are more important now than ever before. We included the voice of the parent and educator in the development of Get Digital to help meet their needs and we continue to include them and to listen. We held a series of roundtables with educators in June and heard firsthand of their struggles, how they were losing children, the difficulty in keeping them engaged, the concern for bullying as today's classroom is a window into their student's life, that teachers were losing the connection with their students, the ability to offer them support during this time when students need them most. We. Um, 
held roundtables with parents. They are concerned about balancing screen time, balancing their own work, and supporting their children's remote learning needs. And we've partnered with EverFi to provide resources to educators and families. Get Digital is available in nine different languages, with additional languages coming this winter. And this provides you with translated conversation starters, activities and tips to share with parents and caregivers to help meet their needs. We'll continue to add new resources uh, for families in the coming months, including tips for parents on their children's well-being. So again, it's a pleasure to be here with you today, and I want to thank you for the work that you're doing to support students and families during this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Holly, for sharing. We are so appreciative of this partnership and the work that Facebook is doing. And we're really excited to show all of you as parent coordinators and um, advocates for your schools and communities more about these resources and how to get access. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, we'll talk a bit first specifically about the Get Digital program and what it looks like for families. And then we'll dive a bit more into some student facing resources and additional tools. But before we do that, wanted to do a quick mentoring Meter. Um, I'm not sure if you all have used Mentimeter before, but what you can do is either pull up your phone or a web browser and you will go ahead to menti.com. So again, you can just pull up, you know, Safari on your phone or a Google Chrome web browser, whatever works best for you. And once you have that pulled up, you are going to um, enter in the code at the top there. So you'll see um, the code is 50. 72605. And again, you just have to type in menti.com and then it's going to ask you for that code. And then you're going to type in your response. So once you have menti.com pulled up, want to hear what you all think. So this is pre pre digital learning. So we know those numbers have increased even more so right now, but pre digital learning on average, how many hours do you think kids would spend on technology per day? Was it 5.5 hours, seven hours? Oh, a lot of us think five and a half hours. Okay. Eight and a half hours or 12 hours. So we'll give you about 30 more seconds to get in your responses here. And again, you just type in menti.com. It's going to ask you for the code right away. And the code is 5072605. So how many hours on average would kids spend on technology per day pre-digital learning? All right, it looks like 5.5 is the um, general, general guess there. We'll get to the answers in just a second, but first I have one more trivia question for you before we get to that slide. So the next one is, let me click over here. The next question we have is for you all to guess the percentage using our little slide um, object. So it should pop up in your Mentimeter browser that I've gone to a new slide. So you can just click on that to go to the next slide. And we'll love to hear you all guess what percentage of students acknowledge um, that they agree that social media has a negative impact on people their age. What percentage of students do you think are acknowledging that they agree that social media has a negative impact on people their age? So you can see there the, the responses are coming in with those um, kind of cone guesses. It looks like the average is we're guessing around 40-ish percent of students are acknowledging that they agree that social media has a, can have a negative impact on people their age. Okay, looks like we're hovering right around 30%. So we'll go ahead and show you the results now. So I'm going to pull that back to our slide here. And so the results are, so we guessed five and a half hours were the average number of um, time that kids were spending on technology per day. And it's actually, this was again, pre-digital learning. It was actually eight and a half hours on average that kids were spending on technology per day. So we know that number has increased even more now um, with digital learning going on in this hybrid model. So it's more important than ever that, that kids are getting this education around digital wellness and how to be good digital 
individual citizens. And the second statistic there, um, we didn't have a trivia quiz on this one, but this is the percent of teens that are agreeing that being online and having access to their phones while they're working on homework can distract them. Um, so that's 54% of teens agree that that um, being online and being in the digital world can distract them. And then lastly, this was the stat we guessed on. So I think we guessed the average was around 40%. Actually, 60%, 68% of teens agree that social media can have a negative impact on many people their age. So that stat was actually higher than we guessed. So we want to make sure that kids are really getting the education they need around how to have healthy digital communities that they're living in because it is such a big part of their lives. So this is this is a bit more background on the digital um, get digital curriculum that that Facebook has created. So Facebook obviously is committed to helping build healthy and supportive digital communities, especially for young people. We know that young people are the most affected oftentimes by um, bullying and by the media that they are presented with. So they're very committed to to helping create those supportive communities. So so the goal is to really help children stay safe online while also empowering them to positively influence the communities around them, whether it's online or in person. Um, and the resources were designed to be used by educators and by families. So we'll talk a lot about as parent coordinators, how you can bring these resources to families. Um, but then teachers also have full curricula as well that they have access to. Um, and Get Digital is designed to really help students safely navigate a wide away, array of online experiences across um, the internet. You can see there, there were plenty of partners that contributed to the development of Get Digital, um, partnered with the Harvard Berkman Klein Center for Youth and Media, the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, ISTE, which we know is a huge um, partner in, in technology oh. education. Oh, sorry, oh. dog parking. One second, I'm going to shut my door. Oh, that, that 2020 life where we're all working from home. Um, and also they partnered with, with um, the, the National PTA to, to help develop the curriculum. So let's go ahead and talk about how to access the platform. So the platform itself is going to have five different pillars, um, which we'll dive a bit deeper into in a bit. There's digital foundations, digital wellness, digital engagement, digital empowerment, and digital opportunities. And I want you all to be able to know just kind of how to access that family page that exists. So you all can open up if you are if you want to kind of explore as I'm speaking, you are more than welcome to and you can visit um, getdigital.everfy.com. So in your browser, that will be getdigital.everfy.com. And that's going to take you to the parents and caregiver page that has a ton of resources that parents can use to talk with students, their, their children at home about digital wellness. So like I said, you're more than welcome to explore that um, as, as we work, um, as I kind of talk through this, we'll dive a bit deeper into it in just a bit. Um, but I also wanted to make sure to highlight on this page that there is the additional languages that Holly mentioned. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you're going to see there are all these foreign translations. So there are two different versions of Spanish that students can access um, the curriculum in. There are lessons in French, German, Italian, Korean, Portuguese, and Swahili. So all you have to do is click into that and, and families will be able to access the lesson pack in, in the language that they speak at home in one of these languages. So that is there for families. And then let's go ahead and dive into the curriculum itself. So like I mentioned, there are five main pillars that the Get Digital curriculum is focusing on. So Digital Foundations is going to teach students how to leverage tools to protect their digital devices and really have that digital safety component of digital citizenship. There's a digital wellness side of things that helps support students' ability to engage with others online, prevent any um, cyber bullying, and, and really 
thrive in healthy online communities. There's the digital engagement side of things that's helping students learn how to think critically when it comes to engaging with the media that they see online and really um, help stop the spread of, you know, the fake news that, that goes on in the world. There's the digital empowerment side of things that helps students learn how to leverage social media to create change and enact change on their communities. And lastly, there's the digital opportunities component. So that's going to help prepare students for the next wave of technology and help them succeed, you know, in their present day and also in the future and their future careers. So those are the five main pillars that the Get Digital curriculum is focusing on. And like I said, there's, there's multiple components to this. So we're focusing pretty heavily on the parent and caregiver side of things today, since we're joined largely by um, parent coordinators, but there's also the educator lessons that we'll briefly show you. And of course, tons of resources for students to engage with as well. And to give you all a little bit of a deep dive into um, what, what the curriculum actually looks like. So if we look at the digital wellness um, pillar, and you can see on this, page that I shared with you all. Again, that's getdigital.everfi.com. The digital wellness pillar, you'll find within all of these, there's activities that parents and families can do with their children. And there's also different tips that will have tons of discussion questions that they can work through. So for example, if we go to this tip activity, you are what you share and what you post. This is going to help students. It'll have a few discussion questions that they can use. It'll give a little introductory lesson about why this is important. And then it'll have um, conversation starters that they can chat through, you know, at dinner or when um, students wrap up their school day or families are finishing up work. So they can ask, you know, do you ever post something online because you want people to see you in a certain way to help students process through how they may create a different online persona for themselves than what they may um, act like in the real world. There's questions like, um, I understand that you may have more than one identity online. Would you be comfortable with me seeing them? So really starting the conversation with, with parents, maybe, you know, engaging with what their students, what their children are posting on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. So it's really helping to get these conversations started at home. And then you'll also see, like I mentioned, there's the different activities too. So these activities are going to have more hands-on interactive outside of the discussion questions, activities that families can do with their children. Um, so it's it has different activities um, about what things that just processing through how they may feel if someone posts an embarrassing photo of them online, or if someone posts something they can disagree with, and then there'll be an activity of kind of having like emoji reactions to how students would feel if a certain thing happened. So it's really just giving parents and families tools to be able to have these conversations at home to really foster digital wellness as, a, as an entire community. So please feel free to explore the rest of those tools. Um, and this is all part of DigSit Commit. So the DigSit Commit Coalition is including partners across Facebook, ISTE, Common Sense Media, and um, others to really help promote digital citizenship across, you know, within communities and across the country. So the coalition, um, including both Facebook and EverFi, are using the ISTE um, DigSit Commit competencies. So they're aligned to that, and they're also um, fulfilling E-rate requirements as well. So with that being said, we're going to switch it off to Chloe now. She's So we shared the, the parent side of things that parents can do collaboratively with their students, and Chloe's going to share more about some um, programs that kids can work through on their line independently to continue to get this education. Awesome. Thanks so much, Meg. Um, so what you can see here right now is this is our, our courses, and I know someone asked in the chat if there's a cost for this, and the answer is no. Everything is 100% cost-free due to our uh, sponsorship, our partner model, just like with Facebook. Um, so you can see here that we have 20 plus courses, and we wanted to share this with you all because you as the parent coordinators sharing this with families are able to share this with parents and also the educators within your schools can use these programs once again 100 percent cost free and it was great to hear in the beginning of this call or, or you all chatted in the different things you're focusing on for november i saw a lot of things like bullying cyber bullying i saw diversity equity inclusion and you can see here we have a bunch of different topics in all grade levels the get digital and ignition courses 
um, or just specifically, sorry, the ignition course that I'm going to get into is for sixth to ninth grade. And you definitely want to pick, you know, which grade this works best in your school with. But for those of you who maybe work with younger grades, we have a course called the Compassion Project. This is a social emotional learning course for elementary, second to fourth grade. We also have a middle school social emotional learning called Character Playbook. Seventh to ninth, we have a bullying course for middle and high school. And then we also do have that diversity, equity, and inclusion course called Diversity Foundations for High School. So feel free to check out any of these courses. We would love to talk more with you about um, the different courses. And something that we're going to tell you about at the end is if you would like to bring a training to your school for the educators to use EverFi, that's something we can schedule. So you can follow up with us and we can train your teachers on how to use this. But we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into specifically the ignition course in just a moment. We deem our ignition course under the um, topic, oh, if you could just go back one more, Meg, sorry. Um, under the social emotional learning uh, umbrella because it used to just be about digital citizenship, but we actually revamped our course. We redid all of the content, all the visuals within the past year, and we've put a social emotional learning um, spin on it because we know all the different research. We know now the, the direct correlation between students or kids being on the computer, even adults being on the computer on social media and mental health as well as your own social emotional learning. So in our social emotional learning um, umbrella, we put our ignition course and what we're going to do now is dive into it a little bit. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see here, this is a breakdown of what the course looks like. So the course is about three and a half hours in total length. And this is an online digital course. It's gamified. Um, it's, you know, if educators are using it, something supplemental to use with their already made curriculum on digital wellness. And then it's also something that parents and families can use with their students at home if the educators at the school are not already assigning it. And it's broken into different lessons. So you can see here, there's six lessons. I'm gonna dive into each one of those lessons so that you can get an idea of what this looks like. As students are going through our courses and this course specifically, it's going to start with a pre-assessment, just asking them, hey, what do you know about this topic already? They're gonna learn about it throughout the course. They're gonna reflect, have a personal reflection. And then they're also gonna be playing games throughout the course. And then at the very end, they take a post assessment to see what they've learned. So that's a 10 question, multiple choice question um, quiz. What did you learn on that topic? And this course is offered in French as well as Spanish. And we know that a lot of you have chatted in different languages and we really appreciate you telling us those languages uh, that you would like to see the courses in. Hopefully over time, that's something that we will have the ability to translate our courses into you know, as many languages as possible. And on this next slide, you're going to see that um, we worked specifically for the admission course with Dr. Larry Rosen. All of our courses are made from subject matter experts. Um, we make sure that we take courses and we align them to standards. So we really wanna make sure that there's very meaningful work being put into the courses before we kind of you know, spit them out to teachers and to families to be using. Um, so that is, if you want to check out his website, it will be linked into this uh, PowerPoint if you wanna check out who helped us come up with the content. So at this point, we're gonna dive into the different lessons or the different modules within the course. So the first module is called Connections and Communities, and Community, sorry. And in this module, through the scenario, some of the key topics are covered such as cyberbullying, social comparison, emotional contagion, and including the best way to handle and prevent these situations. And then in the next slide, you'll see during this, you meet Alyssa. And you're, the learners who are actually taking the course are going to um, choose how Alyssa should respond to comments to her posts and handle challenging situations. So on the next slide, you'll see that Alyssa posts something kind of simulating an Instagram post or you know, any type of post that TikTok, you know, that students are posting nowadays. And you can see all the different comments that are coming in. Some of them are kind, some of them are unkind. So it really gets into that idea of you know, behaving or how you should be behaving on the internet, positive and negative aspects of online communities, and how to uh, deal with, you know, things that could arise on the internet. And then in module two, 
we get into safety and into privacy. Um, and in this specific module, we know that at age 12 is when students begin to self-report high-risk internet behavior. So we want students to walk away understanding how their decisions now can have a long-term impact on their privacy. Um, and this generation, we know they've grown up with technology and they're continuing to do that. So they know how it works, but that doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to be savvy about the different risks that come with being on the internet. So what we do in this module is we follow things that Aiden, that's Aiden right there um, on the computer. He likes to do online on both his computer and his phone. Um, he searches for new games, checks in on social media, he buys new video games, finds new apps, and sees how everything um, interaction that he has in, in creating this, and you get to create his digital footprint. So this, this screenshot right here comes from the course, and you can also see that this is an example of how this course um, is accessible for students. So a couple different aspects of the accessibility students will be able to have this course be self-paced so it does not just run like a video they do have to click next in order to get to the next slide we also have um, different uh, vocabulary development so you can see what's a digital footprint it defines it for the student and then there's also a glossary that they can later on go back to to have those definitions and then all of this text that you see is also narrated so in this specific case because our course can be translated into French and to Spanish it will be narrated in French Spanish or English whatever the student chooses to uh, pick but it has the text as well as the audio and then when we move to the next uh, module, this is a great module, screen time versus offline time, so relevant to the current times um, because we know that teens aren't always sure how to disconnect or when they should disconnect. But just as Meg told us before with those stats, 40% of teens say that they wish that they could disconnect more. And we wanna understand how the consequences of spending too much time online. Um, so in this module, it's a game-like situation or a simulation where the learners ask to help Sophia make choices about how they will balance things that they need to do and things they want to do, uh, thinking about time management, including lots of online activities and distractions. And to see, succeed in this game, the learner needs to find the right balance between online and offline activities and staying focused on things they need to get done like homework. So really gamifying this idea of, you know, these important topics of screen line versus offline time, thinking about your social emotional, but also how can we put this in a game to reach our students. Moving on to the fourth module, this gets into technology and data. Um, so while teens today are, are native to digital devices who express a high confidence in their ability to protect themselves and their data, they also admit to actions that compromise themselves and their data online. I think all of us can admit to that. Um, so in many cases, in these middle school years, they don't have a full understanding of what to watch out for. So in this module, you'll see in the next slide that we start out with Mal Malachi, Malachi who joins his friend in a new online game. And with all of our modules, we set up the scenario to highlight all the cool advantages of technology, online games, phones, et cetera. But then we clarify that they also need to know how to handle the risks. So you help him set up a strong password so they learn how to set up strong passwords and navigate the world of gaming chat rooms. And he also goes to a free game site that has malware and learners help him decide what to do next when he clicks on the malware site malware. And then in module five, we have digital rights and literacy. So, you know, creating online videos is one of the most popular activities that we know of this age group, whether it's filming themselves, playing Fortnite, singing and dancing on TikTok, or making stories on Instagram. So in this module, the characters, Naomi and Cameron, they create an online video. And then you'll see in that next slide that the video goes viral and it's picked up by several sites and influencers. And the characters then discover that their video has been taken down because it's violated the site's policies. So the learners are introduced to concepts and in intellectual property, copyright, and public domain or fair use, which is so relevant to you know, what we're seeing nowadays, especially on Instagram. Um, so students really learning about these different topics. And then in our very last module, module six, it's called Evaluating Content. And this module covers topics that learners are introduced to through library science. And learning about doing research for schools also provides real world insights into concepts like fake news. 
Um, so the scenario sets up with news notifications and the news story is picked up by various sources and friends and the characters go through the sources and get feedback on the va validity of the source and how and why the, um, the coverage varies. So you'll see throughout this entire course, you know, we just explained the six modules, but you don't have to go in order. So let's say, you know, you as the, the parent coordinator or the educator are doing this with students and the content or your curriculum is in a different order you can go out of order and you don't have to do the whole thing maybe you don't want to do the module six evaluating content you can skip that it's totally up to you and up to the educator and the student how they want to go about um, the rest of the course but if a student does complete the entire course they will get a certificate of completion um, and then we do have some scholarship opportunities which we can talk about at the end of this uh, of this webinar. So you'll see a little bit of data just from the DOE in um, from the 2019-2020 school year on the next slide. So this is just to see some of the um, usage that we had in the DOE last year. There were almost almost 1300 students using the uh, ignition course and, and that was a big jump from the previous school year of you know, 4,300 about students. And you can see that knowledge growth. So students started with those pre-assessments that what do you know about the topic in the 50s, 60s range, and the average jump of those almost 13,000 students went up to 87%, 88%, 85%. Those are incredible um, student growth increases. And then you can see there on the side, it says 65%, this is some student responses, 65% said that it taught them how to protect their safety online, 60% said it taught them how to protect their mental well-being online, and 60% said that it made them more likely to speak with an adult about an issue they're facing online. And you'll see a little bit more data of that student perspective. So um, the, the things that were asked, percentage of students who feel prepared to pick a credible website to use for a research project, set up privacy settings on social network, and determine whether an online resource is, is credible. The national average was you know, in the 60s about, and then the average within the DOE was higher than that average, so that, that's great increases and great knowledge gain. And then from there, I'm going to hand it over to Meg to do some trivia. Awesome. Thanks, Chloe. Sorry, I had to get myself off of mute. So wanted to chime in with a um, quick, quick social media break. Um, so wanted you all to chat in if anybody knows which account has the most liked Instagram of all times. So you'll see Jennifer Aniston in the Friends cast, um, um, double tap to plant a tree. Um, X, I'm not young enough to know how to say this, XXS Temptations final post, um, Kylie Jenner and Stormy, they all had under 20 million, but there was a post that had about, I, I, th I want to say it's 54 million or so likes. So well surpassed any of the other most likes. Can anybody chat in what their guess is? I see Laura guessed it was Cardi B. Um, Jamie Lillo guessed Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen is a very popular social media influencer for sure. Cardi B too. Okay. Any other guesses for what is the most liked by more than two times of any of the other most liked posts? Lil Bub. I don't know who Lil Bub is, but maybe Kylie Jenner. So maybe Kylie Jenner had another most liked. Kim Kardashian's a good guess. <laughs> Kardashian's butt. They did say that broke the internet. Fitz fight. Kylie Jenner, lots of Jenner and Kardashian guesses. Okay, so the the correct answer is OC Era is a good guess. Face NYC DOE, Selena Gomez, Cardi. I think Selena Gomez is one. No, you know what? I think Ariana Grande is actually the most followed um, inst Instagram account. BTS, that's a good guess. Okay, the correct answer is the world record egg. An egg is the most liked Instagram post of all times by more than two times higher than any other like has over 54 million likes literally if you just go to Instagram and type in world record egg that is what has the most likes of all time so you know social media sometimes it can consume our lives but there's always funny funny perks to it I know it's it's so funny so yes that is that is by far the most liked post in egg so we'll move on now to talk a little bit more about how to um, access the programs, how to get your students and your school access to the programs. 
This is also going to have a slide that you can share with families about how they can get their students started. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. And Pooja is going to kick us off with this now. Great. Thanks, Meg. I definitely was not expecting an egg to have the most amount of likes. Um, so that was interesting. But let's hop in um, into how to give students access and how to get them logged in. So students will start off by logging into Teach Hub with their NYC DOE username and password as they normally would. Once they do that, they would then just go ahead and select the K-12 tab. Um, once they do that, they should see the blue clever icon pop up on their screen. Um, they can just select that. And then within that clever um, icon, they should have the ability um, to view the Everfi app, which if you take a look at that last screenshot down at the bottom, um, that's what they will see. And then they'll just go ahead and select that. And then a banner will pop up on the bottom that says you have access to remote learning courses. Click here to add them. And that's what they would click um, to access the courses. Awesome. Thanks so much, Pooja. And one thing I wanted to chime in with too, because we are doing this, you know, it's very parent facing. The one other thing to note is that if teachers set this up, this does make this process a bit easier. So the goal is that we we're doing different trainings throughout these next three months for teachers to get these programs set up. Um, but if if teachers aren't setting them up and teacher stu parents want their students to access on their own, this is the way they can do that by clicking that um, remote learning courses banner. Correct. Thanks so much for sharing that, Megan. If, you know, as we mentioned earlier, if any of you kind of wish to share this resource out with, out with educators and teachers, um, we'd be happy to connect with them and kind of walk them through how to set up their account and give students access as well. Um, but once students have signed in and created their accounts, um, what they will see, um, this is what they will see on their um, student dashboard. And as you can see down at the bottom, they will also see um, that this course is brought to them by Facebook. So I think it's always nice to kind of have that familiar name to kind of um, get students excited, um, you know, to start the course. So up next, I did quickly also want to share some educator resources um, that we also have available for teachers. Um, so this educator resource tab will be located in either the get digital tile that teachers will have on their dashboard or the ignition tile. Um, but either way, they will have access um, to all of our get digital resources and platforms. Um, so that is something that we also recommend, you know, you share out with um, teachers to kind of, um, you know, give them additional resources to share with students as well. So up next, we did want to take a moment to highlight some action steps to leave you all with. So we will definitely be sharing this deck out with you all. Um, so you can um, be sure to share this deck to get digital um, platform access um, for all your families that you're connecting with. And then we also do recommend that you take a moment to bookmark our Get Digital Educator and Parent um, parent pages. Um, again, this will just make it easier for you to access in the future and share out with anyone um, that might be interested. And then we also, again, um, you know, Meg, Chloe, and I all support different regions. Um, so if you feel like this resource um, is something that you would like to um, set up a training or PD for, for your teachers, we, you know, we would be happy to set that up and kind of work out um, some timing and schedules with you all um, to help get your teachers started and just, um, you know, connect with them and answer any questions they might have about the Get Digital platform and Everfy in general. And lastly, I did want to um, highlight a special challenge that we have going on this month um, into next month. Um, so this challenge um, started in September and will be ending around mid-November. This is a really fun challenge where students get to um, kind of, you know, use their creative side, um, you know, get that creativity flowing and build out a poster board um, to kind of, um, you know, get students thinking, get their peers and their friends kind of thinking and inspired about how to use the digital platform in a safe and responsible way. Um, so what we will be doing is we will ask students to kind of just speak to their friends and classmates and um, use this poster board to show, um, you know, kind of, you know, 
how what are safe um, behaviors and actions online. So again, um, we do because this um, challenge ends next mid ne you know mid to next month. Um, we do ask that you kind of share out this information with your students and families um, as soon as possible because you know we want to make sure we get those entries in um, because the first 500, 500 entries will be the ones um, that'll be judged. So we want to make sure all your students have. Um, you know, kind of a head start and enough time to prepare for this if they're interested. And then we also do have the website link down at the bottom where you can kind of, you know, get more information. Again, feel free to share this link out with anyone that you think um, might be interested as well. And then lastly, on today's slide, we just quickly wanted to highlight again, um, Meg, Chloe, and um, my email. Again, if you have any questions or you will, you know, kind of wish to connect with us on a one-off basis, talk about any trainings, PDs, or any educators you think we should be connecting with, um, you know, feel free to share out our email and we'd be happy to, um, you know, get the conversation going. Um, oh, thank you. I, I just wanted to bring up a question that was asked um, during your session, which uh, is, would you, would Everfi do um, workshops for parents in a school on topics like cyber bullying and cyber safety? Yes, that's a great question. So we, what something that we can do is we we can arrange if if we wanted to do like a PTA type thing to help them, you know, access the resources and things like that. We are more than happy to kind of chat through best practices for for using the content around Get Digital um, at home and things like that. So that would be definitely if that's something you're interested in, you can reach out to. Um, uh, your borough's um, schools manager, and that's something we can chat through. Terrific, thank you. And Laura or Derry, I think one of you were going to come back with some wrap up remarks, um, answer any questions that we saw in the chat, um, and also share what we have planned for next week. Yes, first I just wanna thank Meg and Chloe and the entire Everfi team. Oh my gosh, this was so good. I like, I mean, so many information um, that we can share with our parents and our school community. Uh, this is a really, really um, special topic because it, we are living in the digital world now and we wanna, this is great to add to our toolbox uh, to really just empower parents to understand how they can balance um, social media and some best practices. So thank you again. Megan and Chloe, um, just for bringing this um, wonderful information um, on our uh, PD Fridays. Uh, so again, everyone, please, please, please know that I will, I promise, I'm going to send you um, this pre-recorded video plus the resources and any information that, um, any questions that you may have in the chat. Let me see if I can answer it and then send it to you at the end of the week wrap up email. So really quickly, um, on your screen, click yes. If click yes or no, if you receive the end of the week wrap up email. Um, you should be able to see it on the right hand. Okay, we've seen a couple, it's on the right hand side. It's a red check mark. Um, so click yes or no, or you can chat. Yes, yes, yes. So we're seeing a lot of yes. So that's good, it's a good thing. Um, to our FLCs that are in the line right now, I will send actually a separate email just for you so you can share that information with your parent coordinators if they missed today's session. Um, we know we have about, I believe, 1,600 PCs across New York City, so we wanna make sure that everyone is aware. Uh, so again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we wanna also thank Holly. Thank you, Holly, at Facebook um, just for providing um, some more awareness on how to be more conscious on, on Facebook and also on digital platforms. Um, and lastly, I wanna thank um, Tali at Common Sense Education. Please, please take advantage of all of the digital citizenship workshops that are happening on Digital Citizenship Week. Um, I love it. I actually click on some of the curriculum and you have you have everything from um, elementary, middle school, 
to high school information. There's activities for the younger kids. There's actually even color books. Um, so please take advantage of that um, and share, share, share uh, with your parents in your school community and also in the district. I want to leave you with one last thought. Um, if you missed my announcement this morning, next month is Family Engagement Month. If we have some pom-poms, I want to just like shake, shake, shake my pom-poms, um, whistles, let's make some noise in the chat because it's all about parent empowerment next month. And we need your help. Um, I'm going to share really quickly my screen just to share with you. That's right, Lisa. Uh, exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for you to hashtag. And next week, I promise you, I'm going to share with you our uh, face uh, toolkit and how you can promote family engagement and use our hashtags. So we have hashtags, we have messages for parents, we have amazing partners. Again, uh, we will have uh, Common Sense Education that will be providing some amazing workshops. We also have the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets will, say, will um, provide live shout outs and also provide uh, virtual clinics, basketball clinics, things that parents can do at home. You necessarily don't have to go outside, but they have, they have some strategies that you can host a clinic in your home. We also have some amazing read aloud. So we have some authors that will join us to do read alouds on a virtual platform. We are going to have our chancellor, our deputy chancellors give special remarks. It's all about family empowerment. So please, please, please start thinking about some of the ways that you can um, showcase. It's all about showcasing. You don't need to do something new. You just want to show exactly what you guys are doing in your school community. And throughout this um, training, we learned about how to post your story, your school story. We um, introduced some um, social media uh, platforms on how to take advantage of Instagram, Facebook, and to post your school stories. So let's, let's share our positive stories next month and let's celebrate how we um, empower our families and how we are, we, we believe in the, in the, in, we believe in the power of partnerships and that our parents are our allies in this work. So stay tuned, stay tuned for next week. I promise you, I will show you some exciting tools but I want you just to, to start thinking about what you guys can do in your districts and your schools and who can you collaborate. So today we gave you a resource that you can actually use. So use some of this information that Everfi introduce us and maybe perhaps you can host a workshop on it. So that's about it. Um, again, thank you our FLCs, our FSCs, our parent coordinators, our teachers, and everyone that participated in today's training. We hope that you enjoyed our Face PD Fridays in collaboration with our amazing, amazing, amazing uh, DIIT. And I apologize that I've always said this wrong, but our digital empowerment team, Laura, Lisa, <laughs> Christine, <laughs> and Latiqua. Thank you, thank you. Empowerment at DOE, we, you are awesome. Thank you so much, Derry. Um, you know, we're super excited to be able to help all of you and to provide support. So a couple of things um, just to kind of wrap us up here. So um, as stated, next week we've got another great uh, session planned and you're gonna hear more from Tali at Common Sense. Uh, we spent this week and next week really kind of um, highlighting all the digital citizenship resources and that's not by accident um, as Tali said next week is digital citizenship week and we know that this year more than ever this work is so pertinent to our students and our schools right all kids at some point are doing some form of remote learning if it's full time um, for some kids it's for part of the week, but either way, they're online, they're using these platforms, and we have to make sure they feel empowered to make smart and responsible decisions. So next week, um, Tali will be sharing some resources that Common Sense has. And again, we, we really invite you to use all the resources, right? Like this is not just about saying like, oh, I learned about Everfi, I'm only using this. Like, 
honestly, all this stuff works when you use it together. Uh, the other thing I want to address, and it, it, it came up in the chat, um, and this is something that comes up quite a bit, is the question around translation. And um, we know that obviously we teach and work with such a diverse population of students and families, and our families need translations. However, you don't have to actually put um, any type of widget or button for translation on your website. Um, that's like an antiquated way of doing translations. Um, instead, what you need to make sure uh, to do when when you want to reach the widest audience possible is you want to write for effective translation and write in plain language. Basically what that means is you want to write so that whatever you're writing can be easily translated by AI. Um, what we know to be true is that individuals that need content in a language other than English, they actually do it on their own. They set their device to whatever language. Um, for many of us, you know, we utilize the English language. It's the default on a lot of our devices. However, um, you know, families can set that to Spanish, French, Afrikaans, literally whatever language they want. And then things always auto translate on their end. So that is why um, for families, it is so important that you're just writing in plain language because then it ensures that the translation is as accurate as possible. Um, when we tend to write, in like what I call edu jargon, you know, all those really big fancy words that only educators use, or when we start using a lot of I, um, acronyms like IEP and FLC and FSCs, like all these things that we use within the DOE, this little alphabet soup we've got going, that means nothing uh, when it gets translated. So if you need more support, I know that uh, Lisa just dropped into a document, um, you know, some, some more information on how to write in plain language. We also offer some on-demand classes. We do a class live as well where we, we show the on-demand class. But please, 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 if you need support with translations, um, we can absolutely help you. But it's not a widget or an extra thing you add. It's really more of like how you're writing and writing for that effective translation to happen. Um, and the two classes uh, that we offer, um, it, it's called Writing in Plain Language and Writing for Effective Translation. So those are the two names of the classes. They are on-demand classes. Um, and again, Lisa dropped that link into the chat. So if you need that, we highly recommend, I mean, any anyone at the school level who is, you know, sending things out uh, to their family community needs to take this class. So not just parent coordinators, but probably, you know, your admin, school secretaries, even teachers, right? Like we, we all often communicate with families. So it is extremely important um, that we are doing our very best to make sure that that communication actually reaches them. Um, all right, so with that, we do have a link for the sign uh, in. Uh, Latique was going to drop that in just a moment. Um, in fact, there it is. This uh, class is called Digital Citizenship Resources with EverFi. So if you go on to that form, literally scroll all the way down um, where you see all the sessions, obviously fill out all the other information, but when you get to the sessions, um, it's the very last session that says digital citizenship resources with EverFi. Okay. Um, and uh, we'd, we'd love to, um, you know, offer you additional classes. So I'm actually going to launch a poll. Um, we always like to kind of gauge where folks are at, so we will launch this again for the folks in the room. Um, but just what what classes or what topics do you think are feeling just most pressing for your needs right now? Um, so you'll see that poll. It, it is live. Um, and we definitely want to highlight that we want to be doing share sessions. And I know that Derry kind of touched upon that, especially as we head into November, um, which is all about, uh, you know, parent and community empowerment. So we definitely would love to schedule a share session for November. Um, so kind of, uh, you know, this is not about doing anything extra. This is not about, you know, kind of putting on a show. This is about what you really are doing in your school, how you are supporting your families, and how we can all kind of learn and grow together on that front. 
Um, so it is in the chat. Uh, I see Derry fast and furiously posting our uh, attendance link. Please make sure, uh, like I said, to fill that out, but also respond um, to the poll that's also active right now on which session you, um, you would like to see. Again, next week, we've already kind of accounted for. It is going to be Tali from Common Sense, who's going to lead us um, in PD. But moving forward, we want to, like I said, be responsive to your needs and find out what will make the most sense for you. Um, Laura, can you share again the name of the class that sure. Tali is doing? Oh, oh that Tali is doing? Um, um, you said next week she's leading a class? Yeah, well, it's going to be on um, common sense and really wide open school. So I don't know that it, ha it has an official title just yet, but it's going to, most of it will actually focus on wide open school, which she kind of gave you a piece of today really, really briefly, but it is such a rich um, and robust resource. And we know that for many of our families um, who need support on those like, you know, at home days, you know, the, the days when they're not in school, they're, they're learning at home, we know that families families are struggling with those days, trying to provide some structure, trying to kind of make sure that, you know, their kids have enough things to do. Um, the, the Wide Open Schools resource is amazing for that. So Tali will walk us through. Again, it's a great resource. Um, and, and she's an amazing partner to have along with our partners today from EverFi. Thank you again to Chloe and to Meg, to Pooja, to Holly, to everyone from the team who showed up. Um, I really, really appreciate you helping us DOE educators because, you know, right now we just, we all need the support, right? So we have about five more minutes and I just want to send another quick reminder that um, Chloe is still here. So you have, if you guys have maybe a couple of more questions that we didn't answer, please feel free to repost your question. But again, um, Everfi uh, mentioned that they can present this information at your school community, so they will reach out to you. Um, once again, just another friendly reminder that this presentation will be posted at the end of the week wrap-up email. So we will have the entire video plus the resource and the contact information. Um, anyone has any final thoughts, please share your thoughts in the chat as we close out our PD Friday. I know I'm leaving, I'm leaving with, a, a, like with, a, with a full stomach <laughs> of information. So thank you again. Thank you. And please, please, please make sure you fill out the attendance form. Um, I'm going to post it again on the, on the chat. Um, and this ends our PD. So I guess we have like three more minutes. If you have a question, we're, we're still here. And we will end this PD at exactly 11.15. I feel like we need some music. <laughs> a little Friday music. Absolutely. Yeah, we need to add that for our future sessions. Yeah, we're definitely, next week, music is on deck for sure. For sure. Intro, um, the perfect Spotify playlist. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> Christine is going to be our, our DJ. I love it. All right. I'm into it. All right, folks. Um, and I see someone um, asking what the session is. I'm going to post it in the chat one more time. But it is Digital Citizenship Resources with EverFi. It is 